I could never keep track of my workouts until I stopped trying to do it with clunky, expensive apps that didn't work with the way I think. Turns out the best fitness tracker is the one I built myself in Notion. In this video, I'll walk you through the exact setup I use to track every set, target different muscle groups, and ensure that I'm meeting my goals. If you're the kind of person that's motivated by structure and clean, simple systems, this one's for you. I'm Anthony Wagner, and this is Queer Efficiency, where I help fellow productivity nerds solve tiny problems. Let's get started. Alrighty, so we're here in Notion, and this is the tracker that we're gonna build today. On the right, we have the full database, and on the left, we have this little button that helps us to reset the workout. The goal is to have a view with weights where we can track all of the details of each exercise by major area of the body, and then also to have a today view that only shows the things that we need to see while we're at the gym and doing a workout. So let's move into a new page and we're gonna call this fitness. And I'm gonna make this full width and I also want to give it a cover and we'll just search unsplash for gym. That one's perfect. I also tend to like giving things an icon and so we'll do weight and give it a dumbbell icon. Now, when I build major pages in Notion, I like to have on the left side, a column, a narrow one, where I can add a variety of buttons and actions, and then on the right side to have the full database. So let's build it that way. We'll type slash, and then we're gonna type column and select two columns. And then I'm gonna insert my standard heading, which is a spaced out heading followed by a divider line. So on the left, we can say functions, and I am literally typing a space between each letter. And then we'll go to the next line and type three hyphens, and that inserts the divider line. And then we'll come to the right column and type database, and then enter, and three lines. Now we wanna make this column much narrower, and sometimes this is a little hard to grab when there's nothing else there, but that'll be good. On the left, we'll insert a button, and we'll call it reset workout, and I'll give it an icon, but we'll leave it, we're not gonna put anything in it just yet. And yes, it's okay, That's it has no actions, but I'm just leaving it there as a placeholder for the moment. On the right side, we're gonna insert a database and we'll make it an inline database. I do wanna give it a title. And I like to insert database on these when it matches the name in case I ever need to find it, it's easier to spot what's the actual database versus the page that it's on. But we definitely don't need to see the title, so I'm going to click here and choose hide. Next, I'm gonna rename the main property, the primary property, and I'm gonna say exercise. And then I'm going to add a select property and I'm gonna call it area. And this is where we're gonna add the different areas of the body. So we'll start with lower body. And I like to do this in reverse. So I'm going from the low end of the body up to the upper end of the body. But I do it in reverse because when they enter here into Notion, they'll show in that reverse order. So it's lower body, core, back, and upper body. So it has the properties, and then I'm going to give it an icon. That one's good. And then we can add exercises. So I'm just gonna grab the ones that I have already in this demo, and I'll copy them with the area into my fitness tracker, and they should populate with the area just like they did, which is great. All right, so now that we have the exercises pasted in here, we wanna set up grouping so that this groups by the area of the body. So let's come back in here, choose group, and then choose area. And then this is one notion quirk that it doesn't tend to follow the order that you put them in when you did the select. So like they show up in an order here, that's the order I created them in. But in the grouping, they don't follow that order for whatever reason. So I don't really know why, but yeah. So we're gonna put them back in the order that we had them in, which is exactly that. And that looks good. Now what you could do in this view, because the groups are here, you could hide this. So you don't have to see it, it doesn't duplicate. And now we have a set of exercises in each group by area of the body. So now we need to add some information about each. The first thing that we're gonna track is the weight that we're lifting. So let's add a number property. We'll call this weight. And I will give this also the dumbbell icon and make that a little narrower. And then we wanna track the set that we're doing. So I'm gonna add another number property and I'll call this set. And then we'll give it an icon. I think this is how I found this. Yep, I liked this one. 
for some reason. That one worked for me. I just found it by searching repeat. And then we want to make this a ring. And you'll see that in a second why. And then we're going to tell it to divide by three. When I do my exercises, I typically try to do three sets to failure. So lifting heavy, as many reps as I can do to failure in a set. Usually it depends on how much weight I'm lifting, three to 12 reps in a set. And I try to do three sets. So I divide by three so that we can make this a little narrower. When we have a set number in here, if I say one, you can see that it's got this ring and it's a third populated. And then I can do two and it's partially, actually we can do it one, two, and three. So you can see that that's what that ring does by dividing by three. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna rename this view to weights and I'm also gonna give it that dumbbell icon. I know I'm a little overusing that, but Notion doesn't have a ton of fitness icons, so I do overuse that. And next, we're gonna add a new table view and I'm gonna rename this to today. And I'll give it a day icon. And the point of this view is to only show the exercises that we're doing today. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna identify the exercises that we wanna do today by inserting a value in the set column. So what we need to do to only show the things that we need is to set a filter on set. And we wanna set that filter up to only show things when set is not empty. And when we set that right now, all of the exercises are gonna disappear because there's nothing filtered on. Then to identify what exercises we're gonna to do today, we just need to give them some sort of value. So I'm gonna insert a zero, and the way I did that for all of them was selected the top cell, hit shift and down on my keyboard, and then hit control D. And that repeated the same value all the way down. Now, we don't have to only do things in a single area. Let's say we're also doing some back and I want to do an incline row. I can insert a zero there. And then what I get when I'm here is all of those exercises. In this case, let's actually turn back on the area so we can see that. And you can see those are the exercises that I'm gonna to do today, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Now, the next thing I do like to add is a visual reference. And this is a pretty simple thing to add, just grabbing images from the internet. I wanna caveat here that if you're doing any of this for commercial reasons, you can't grab images off the internet and then sell them. But if you're just doing it for personal use and you're building your own tracker just for your use, no big deal, you can totally do that. So I'm gonna add a new property and I'm gonna add a files and media property. And I'm gonna call this demo. And I'm gonna give this an image icon. And then what's cool is that I can head to Google and I can search for hammer curl, you can see I did this already, diagram GIF. Yes, GIF. And then you can come to images and see any of these. So I'm just gonna pick this one. And I wanna see one that's actually animated, which is great just to give the visual of what muscles are being worked out and also how to do the exercise. All I have to do is right click, hit copy image address. Be sure not to hit copy link address. We don't want the link to the page that it's on. We want the actual address to the image. And then we can come back to Notion and hit embed link and then link. And it will bring that in very quickly. So I could do a couple of those. So I'm going to just go off on my other monitor and search concentration curl diagram GIF. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of these and I can just select one. Tend to like to choose the ones that have a little bit better resolution, but it's not a huge deal. Copy image address, embed link and paste. And then what we can do is, first of all, when you're in this view, if you click on this, you'll be able to expand this. And if you're doing it on mobile, which is the ideal here, it'll look better, but it still gives you the idea of what that exercise is. We can also come in here, open this page, and customize the layout, hit the little plus button here, and add demo as its own section. Hit apply. And then when you open the page, it's also a quick thing to get to that demo image as well. So we're gonna go back collapse that. And this looks really great. I think this is a great place to stop in this video. And then in the next video, I'm going to walk you through adding all of the control buttons. So adding this button, adding a button for today to turn these exercises on and off quickly, and adding a button that allows us to track the sets much more quickly than having to open this and enter a number manually. We can just set a bunch of buttons and it makes it very easy to use this tracker on mobile, which is the goal. All right, that's it for this video. If you found anything in this video helpful, please scroll down and tap the like button. It tells the algorithm that this is quality content. It also tells me to keep creating things just like this. Thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.